another day, Pastor Kim. Yes, it is. That is me. I will rejoice and be glad. And hey, 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 hey. Listen, y'all. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Spirit of the Lord is here. Spirit of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. Spirit of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere.
um, I want to say to Dr. Mike, Apostle Mike, um, Dr. Dee Dee, and the Spirit of Faith family, you guys have been my family for, I was, what was it like, since I was five, so you guys mean a lot to me. We had church here, but it was nothing like our services, nothing like our experiences at Spirit of Faith. Um, just like our camaraderie that we have at Spirit of Faith, I will never forget. It made me appreciate it even more. I just thank you guys for instilling in me everything that I was able to like um, perform and demonstrate while I was here at BMT. Excellence in all we do, integrity first, um, leadership, everything, those are love, um, everything that you guys have taught us, um, I was able to use here and I'm still able to use it um, in my Air Force career. So I just appreciate you guys for everything you poured into me from five all the way up to now, 24 years, 24 years old. So now that I've graduated, today is my last day of graduation. Um, March 18th, I will be going to San, uh, Fort Sam. I'm going to Fort Sam, that's uh, Fort Sam Houston. I'm going to be studying medical materials, so medical apprentice basically, I'm just um, getting my foot in the medical door. City Central family, thank you for all your support and all your prayers. You guys have been so supportive in this, in this process of mine. It was tough for me, but you guys made it so easy. Uh, my dad is like, oh, so-and-so said this about you. It said, you know, keeping you in your prayers and that type of stuff. And BMT, you need as much support as you can get being in this field, especially as a female as well. So I just appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And I just um, decree Bible, prom Bible promise return on you and your family's life, all that you've poured into me and that you've um, given out to me. So I appreciate you guys. May is always the month of mental health awareness. And here at Faith City Central, we have a mental health awareness summit that happens every May. This year, it will be May the 11th, and I want you to be a part of it. That's whether you're having challenges or not having challenges. We just simply give you some principles and some tools to apply to your life so you can live a victorious life every day of your life. I'm so excited to be able to have with me today, Mr. Rick Thomas, who has attended our summits. Absolutely. How has that summit benefited you? Well, I thank you very much for this, Dr. Needy. You know, it's benefited me in so many ways. You know, coming out of the military, I didn't know that I had some of the issues dealing with anxiety, so forth and so on. And coming to the actual, the summit, you know, it gave me some tools on how to deal with or to overcome those things that I was experiencing. And and, and, and so my, my encouragement would be for folk to come on up. As you said, you know, it's not for somebody who may have a challenge, it's for somebody who just want to be aware of how to, even maybe to help somebody else with an issue that they may be experiencing. I love so that. So I enjoy it. I love it, thank you so much. And here at our summit, we are always integrating information like from science and the Bible. So you don't have to come and think it's gonna be one-sided, no. Our pastor teaches us a sound word on how to have a sound mind. Science just complements what we do here in ministry. So I want you to come be a part of it. May the 11th at 10 a.m. at our Temple Hill campus. See you there. Hey ladies, I wanna invite you to our Women Walking in the Word pajama party, our unplugged pajama party. That's right, it's happening on April the 1st, that's Easter Monday at our Brandywine campus at 7 p.m. Bring a friend, bring somebody to be a part of it. That's April the 1st at our Brandywine campus. It's a pajama party. See you there. People of the world today are fading. All of us have the ups and downs. You better think about it or you won't be around. What we need is a little bit of love. Sent by the one from heaven above. Take it from me, it's simple and plain. This ain't no game. You know what I'm saying?
but but and this is the same even with money we have had thousands tens of thousands of dollars that come into the ministry as a result we've been on television 35 what 34 years now 36 years almost 36 years and people send money in for you know for the television and uh, it, it passed much of it a lot of it in the past particularly has passed through my hand and it's you know a real temptation to take some of that money who's gonna know you wouldn't know I mean thousands tens of thousands of dollars I made a policy I you said count yourself dead I can always just like you I can use money all the time anytime I got something I'm useful all the time are you following me and and but I had to make rules for myself and, and see, I'm not, I'm not doing any credit, and I'm, I'm not telling you about it for any credit or applause, but I'm going by what the words it says, count yourself to be dead. Dead folk don't embezzle funds. Dead folk can't steal money. Dead folk don't take what doesn't belong to them. So I just made a rule for myself. Unless somebody specifically, and occasionally this would happen, where somebody sends something in, and they would earmark it specifically for Fred Price personally I'm taking it all and no problem with that at all because if they didn't want me to have it they wouldn't have put my name on there and made a notation this is for Pastor Fred Price when I was pastor Frederick K. C. Price so I had but I so I had to make rules for myself that's why I've never been caught stealing any money not because I'm so good it's because I'm so smart no covenant smart I did many years ago what the word told me to do count myself to be dead and I'm telling you of all the experiences that I've had in life I have never heard of anybody from the cemetery rising up and stealing any money Hey, thank you. I receive. You all are so kind. I'm going to come back here, up here more often. Uh, you may be seated. Thank you. Uh, that's a first, isn't it? Typically, the rest of the people here are noonday Baltimore. They don't stand when we come in. I don't know. We have to train these people up here. That was a first for me um, as well to hear Dr. Price said that he had thousands and even tens of thousands coming through his hands as though he was a part of the uh, counting of the contributions. Okay, did you all get that from that? Yeah. I mean, because if it's coming through his hands and it's coming through the mail, he had to be a part of, I'm going to ask mom about that. That had to be quite early on because, I mean, he, he talked about tens of thousands. The, the, the ever-increasing faith television ministry where I was introduced to Dr. Price, any of you all, of you all introduced to Dr. Price through the ever-increasing faith ministry? Yeah. Huh? WTTG Channel 5. That's right. What time on Sunday morning? 8 a.m. That's right. And I happened to take his place after he went off years ago. When he went off Channel 5, Spirit of Faith Christian Center took his place because we needed to have faith in that spot every Sunday morning. And a lot of people thought that 
it was, this was his ministry because of the similarities. I said, that was a great compliment. Yeah, if they thought that. Well, <clears throat> some of them stayed away from it because <laughs> they thought we were connected. Nevertheless, you're going to have those who speak well of you and those who won't. Uh, we definitely have been praying for what has happened here with the Key Bridge, right? What a tragedy, huh? Uh, who would have ever thought? You know, and thank God they had enough, um, enough, uh, what is it, uh, presence of mind to call and have the traffic cut off. And see, I didn't know that initially uh, because I saw a big tractor trailer on the news go by just before it went down. But the, wow, unfortunate workers that were on the bridge, they tell me they're still uh, about six families yep. that are connected to these men that were doing the construction on the bridge. We certainly want to pray for their families. Uh, it was my concern. How many of y'all go across that bridge frequently? Frequently, yeah, okay, so, uh, all right, good. Uh, wow, thank God you were not out at 1 a.m. in the morning, uh, Pastor Tao. My first question would have been, what is he doing out now? <laughs> yeah, some people were working, unfortunately, and we definite, definitely don't make light of that. We want to keep their families in prayer, all right? Um, Man, the traffic was a little strange getting here, I mean, on the rain. I'm surprised so many of you are here. Uh, you obviously don't fit in a bunch of the fair weather Christian. Okay? Um, they have a special announcement they wanted me to make. Uh, first of all, before the special announcement, uh, some of you may want to consider Saturday Night Live with our very own Pastor Tao. Yeah. yeah. So we're up and running again on Saturday evenings, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thank God we have the daylight state savings time. Can we get a petition going to keep it this way? Did you all prefer this way or the, the time changing? This way, right, Brother Rudy? Yeah, this way. Uh, all in favor say aye. aye. Okay, any opposes, we don't care. <laughs> all right. Uh, there's a special announcement that I have uh, concerning uh, the conference on YouTube and Facebook live tomorrow at 8 p.m. So uh, when you get the notification, you all do follow us on YouTube and Facebook Live, right? Right? Oh, boy. If you don't, uh, if you don't even know if you do, or if you don't know how to, then before you leave today, uh, take your phone. Oh, you can bring it to me, or you can, let's make Danielle do something. Yeah, yeah, let's get Danielle to do it. Wave your hand, Danielle. She'll help you to know how to follow so that you can get the notification because you may be involved in something, doing something, you'll get the notification and boom, you can uh, tune in. And then there's movie night on Friday night at the Brandywine campus. Now, it is not the initial movie that I was looking forward to having, but it is just as intriguing and should I say informative, I actually transformative as well in the huge degree. Any of you have ever been to Israel, Jerusalem? Yeah, okay, Juan, if you have not been, it would be a wonderful experience. As a matter of fact, this documentary uh, was done so well uh, when I, Dr. Dita and I, and we went with Matt 
and Lori Crouch, Lori Crouch out of TBN, and the uh, level of constituents that they have there in um, especially um, Jerusalem, um, we didn't get to see everything that's shown on this documentary. So I uh, highly want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. Uh, they're gonna have free popcorn and all of that. I tried to get them to do a steak and potatoes and you know <laughs> shrimp and that kind of thing, but they said it wasn't gonna be that kind of party, Pastor. So I said, well, all right, I'll speak to the pastor later about that. So that's Friday night at 7 p.m. Uh, oh, uh, ooh, ooh, I'll get it. Uh, pardon me? Yeah, 60, route, 60, route 66, I think. Uh, Dr. Dee, if you're watching, uh, make sure I, I just it slipped my mind. Uh, text me and let me know exactly uh, the, the name of it. And it's, it, it has never been shown in the movie theaters or any uh, where uh, it was actually presented to um, ooh, a group of individuals that uh, Didi and I happened to be invited to be a part of it and it's showcase scene and they uh, gave us the right to show it at our ministry. So um, I, I just blessed my life. Actually, it kind of uh, restored a level of confidence that was broken in me. It restored that level of confidence concerning humanity about where we are as a body uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, you know, based upon my recommendation, I think you should have um, consideration, a great consideration uh, or deliberation about your uh, being there. Um, media department, do something for me before uh, I go any further. Uh, get us to Colossians chapter number one and let's take a look at verse number three. I was so intrigued uh, in my devotion time. Uh, typically my devotion goes as such, like uh, I keep my phone nearby me just in case I get a word, even while I'm in um, my bedroom. Uh, Dr. Didi doesn't particularly care for it. Uh, so I have to silence it a lot uh, because of her preference. You know, um, I guess the bedroom belongs to the wife. I don't know. I don't know how they get to run things because I like to keep my television on. She tell me to t turn it off. I don't know. I don't know how this should work. Uh, I thought that the man was the head of the house and somebody can correct me if I read wrong somewhere um, but nevertheless, we uh, try to agree upon things and sometimes I'm cooperative and, and sometimes I like throwing a little, you know, turbulence into the entire equation, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, and I would say some, something else about that, but I see there some singles here. So I'll move right along with respect to uh, what I wanted to share with you. My regiment is pretty much, the minute I get up, I will not look at a text or an email or Instagram or Facebook before I indulge in scripture. And so part of my devotion, I uh, wanted to just look at, a happy birthday, sir. I wanted to, uh, uh, um, uh, when was your birthday? Do you have a birthday lately, recently? Uh, yeah. Today. Today. Well, why are you looking at me like I'm, 
What? I said happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Did you, did you see my comment in there or something? No, sir. Yeah, you, somebody posted something. Your birthday is today, too? Your birthday is today? Man, and you all are here at noonday for your birthday? Yeah, Woo! I'm, so, so after noonday, your wife has some plans for you, so you made it this, and then whatever goes on from here. What a birthday. Okay, I, I got about, let me see, let's see how much money. I don't have uh, much money left. I had the hook of my main man, Thomas and Mary. Let's see, one, two, three. Okay, oh, okay, I know what I can do. Okay, yeah, boom. Y'all be patient, okay? 25, 30, 35, 40, 50. Okay, okay, are you all are 50 years old today? 47 and 49? Well, he does the exceeding abundantly above all you guys. So that's fifty dollars a piece for your birthday. Thank you for. I hope there. I hope there are no other birthdays today because all I got for you is happy birthday. <laughs> uh, let's look at this because this was my heart towards you all uh, concerning uh, where we are today. The apostle Paul said here, oh, I receive, I receive. Get that, get that, get that. I receive. All right, okay. Well, I mean, that's how saturated, yeah, that's how saturated I'm in this system. I can't give it away, you know, fast enough. That's just how, oh my God, if I could tell you all about some stuff that's going on. Did I say that Sunday? I said it a couple of times. Said a couple of times. Mm. Oh, uh, okay, praise the Lord. Uh, stay tuned, but stay in prayer. Okay, pray this. Father, whatever he has been wanting to tell us and has not told us, we pray that it comes to pass so he'll tell us very fast. Okay, how about that? Does that work? All right. In Jesus' name, amen. We give thanks to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. Praying when, class? Praying when? Always for you. Hmm. Always for you. Praying always for you. Praying always for you. I hope you are praying always for me. Because I'm praying always for you. And what better prayer than to take a prayer out of the living word of God and pray for you. Got it? The Apostle Paul did this for the church at Ephesus. Now we see the church of Colossae. And let's go on with it. Praying, for, praying always for you. Go on, uh, media department, please. Verse number four. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your what? Love, Love for oh. just your little clique. No, just your little group. Oh. All the saints. After you finish in prayer, oh, well, thank God for this Passion Week, too. You know, this is the week we celebrate and commemorate, although it is not the week, technically, based upon the calendar. But, of course, we commemorate and celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there are a lot of things that's wrong about that, uh, but nevertheless, what we are most concerned about is that the man died, yes. the man went to hell, yes. spoiled and kicked behind, and then led captivity captive, ascended, ascended to the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession on our behalf. 
He rose again with all power in his hand. Ah, uh, put me in B flat. Oh, they're not here. On Friday, you're going to hear a whole lot of that this week. And how could it be that a man would die Friday and be raised Sunday when the Bible says he would have been in the heart of the earth three days and three nights? So where do we get this good Friday from? And maybe Pastor Wayne will talk about it tonight. That's not in what I'm going to be discussing. But do the math. Friday day, Friday night. Saturday day, Saturday night. When did they say he got up? Early Sunday morning. What did we get three days and three nights in that? As Jonah was in the belly of the fish, three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. What class? So you have something to talk about and you will know the difference in between that and be able to be clear. Hey, we're not going to get caught up in all this technical stuff about when he died and when he rose. All we should be concerned about is that he died and that he rose. Can I get an amen? amen. Am I right, I say? Y'all know who I'm, I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints, go on. Because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you've heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Now, you can take a prayer like this and customize it to your modern day or your contemporary day situation, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth what? I pray that you bring forth fruit, class, as it is also among you since the day you heard and you knew the grace of God in truth. So you should have been bearing fruit ever since you've heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't get no help here, obviously. <laughs> Pardon me. Next verse, please. As you also learn from who? Epaphras, or how, how's that going to go? Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. Watch this. Who also declared to you, or also declared to us, your love in the spirit. Look how he's praying for them. He said, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to do what, class? Pray for you. Pray for you and to ask that you may, woo, glory. This is what really struck a chord with me, and this is what I pray for you, that you be filled with the knowledge of his will and what? All wisdom and what? Spirit. Listen to me. Listen to me. You learn to know me. It doesn't get any better than this. When watch this, go back. When you when you are filled with the knowledge of his will, because whatever is in his will will also be his bill. And anything you continue to do out of his will will be your bill. But you are filled with the knowledge of his will. I think a good shout should go on that right there. Just glory to God. Shout, I'm filled with the knowledge of his will all the days of my life. Shout this, not only me, but my children's children's children are filled with the knowledge of his will. 
I'm preaching better than y'all are saying amen. But as long as you're receiving this, this is my prayer. This is my prayer for you, Danielle, because you encounter some things that I'm not aware of and I'm not with you always in making these different decisions and <clears throat> being, of course, uh, 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 being, of course, um, aware of what you should be making as it relates to your decisions, uh, that your discretions are, are clear and concise, that even though your pastor is not around, uh, uh, advisors are not around, the, the, the good counselor is always with you, and I have prayed that you are filled with the knowledge of his will. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, ooh, I gotta say this right. Help me with this, Holy Spirit, because they'll judge me if I say it wrong. Um, mm, a lot of people would or have concluded that Oh, Lord, help me say this correctly. Um, even though you're a child of the Most High God and you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, if your decisions aren't directly connected to the knowledge of his will, you won't have the will of God performed in your life. In other words, is God making you to prosper or are your decisions? Is God responsible for your success in life as it relates to your outcomes in life or are your decisions? Okay, now watch this, y'all, because he said, uh, somewhere, I think in Deuteronomy, Exodus, I place before you life and death, blessings and what? Then he tells you to do what? Choose which one you're going to have. But then he helps us with this exam. He says, choose life. Why? So that you and your children's children will do what? We'll live, right? Where is that? Find that. One of you leaders, where is Pastor? Deuteronomy what? 28? No, it's, it's not Deuteronomy 28. That's the list of blessing. You, you all, somebody on Deuteronomy 30. Okay, the smart people are at home. Suzanne, oh, oh who said that? Did, did somebody say that? Okay, I see you, Susanna. Okay, yeah. Alan, huh? Yeah, well, they say 30, 19. So you say 30, 15? Then you say 30, 16. Which one is it, class? Okay, well, let's start at 15. Go 15, we'll come back to Colossians. I want to just set this up. But this, is, this was my heart even in breaking to, from the as he is, and you need to be as he is and your decision making, but if you're not receiving, being filled with the knowledge of his will, then your decisions will be contrary to the will of God, and your outcomes will be <clears throat> predicated on your, he said 15, he said, see, I've set before you today, what? Life, Life and death. death, where this says, Life and good, death and evil. This is the New King James. 16 says, in that I command you today to do what? Love the Lord your God, to walk in his what? To keep his what, class? And his, and his, that you may do what? Live and multiply, and the Lord your God will, mm, bless you in the land which you go to what? 
possess. Verse 19, he said, but if your hearts turn away so that you do not hear, ooh, somebody shout, I thank God my pastor pray that I'm filled with the knowledge of his will. Go ahead and say that. I thank God my pastor pray that I'm filled with the knowledge of his will. He says, because if you turn away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, look at this. I announce to you today that you shall what? Surely perish. You shall not what? Prolong in the land in which you cross over the Jordan to go over to go in and possess. Number 19, Who I call heaven and earth as witnesses today, even against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing, therefore do what? God, the man gives you the answer to the test. He like, here's life and death, right? Here's life and death, class. Right? Choose life. Woo, shout, I thank God. I thank God. I'm, filled I'm filled with the knowledge the of his will. will. Oh, you should walk around today and just confess that. Thank you, Father. I'm filled with the knowledge of your will. Thank you, Father. I'm filled with the knowledge of your will. Thank you, Father. I dare y'all to type that in, man. Type that in chat room. I'm filled with the not Gregory already ahead of me. I thank God I'm filled with the knowledge of his will. Go ahead, Joy. I see you, Borkins. I'm filled with the knowledge. Teresa, I'm filled with the knowledge of his will. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Brown, I'm filled. Chris Davis, I'm filled. Yeah, I choose the... Jonathan, man, okay, they're coming in here. I'm filled. Khalil, Khalil is filled with the knowledge of his will. Yeah, praise God. Des D, okay. I'm filled, Tracy, of his will. I'm not, I just don't have the knowledge of his will, but I'm filled. So if I'm filled, then that means I don't have any room for any ignorance. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. He says, I place before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, do what class? Life. That both you and your descendants may live. You and your descendants may live. Now, let's go back to Colossians. Chapter number one, the last verse we left off, where he prayed for the church at Colossae. I pray for the church at Faith City Central that you are filled with the knowledge of his will. Going down some, where we left off. What verse did we leave off? Seven, eight, filled with the knowledge of his will. Go to eight. Yeah. Okay. Is that verse number eight? Yeah. Okay, go, go to nine. I think we did, yeah, there you go. There we go. Filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and in all spiritual understanding. Oh my word, you will not know everything you should know and some of the things you decide upon Sometimes you will decide on them without having full natural understanding. Does that make sense to you? Full natural understanding. Well, here we go. But something, something, something said, something told me. Come on, y'all know how you, something told me. You know, something told me. I just didn't have any peace about doing that other thing, but the peace is on this, but this that makes, I cannot tell you how many times I've been in those situations 
Well, I had to just go with God. Some people say gut. Intuition. Inkling. Impressed upon. What is it? What else? What do you all have? A knowing. A knowing. It's, it's a knowing. It's, it's, it's that feeling or that sensing that I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. You know, and then sometimes you're driving. Woo! Based upon what just happened across that bridge, if God tells you to go another way, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Why am I going this way? Now it's, it's faster to go across the bridge. Only God knew that the bridge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And those who are led by the Spirit, because in the natural, these two gentlemen shouldn't be here on their birthday. Because we don't do church on our birthday. <laughs> huh? We do noonday Bible study on our birthday. The, in the rain. Those who are filled with the knowledge of his will will be found in the place. And sometimes you just got to, you just have to, you just all the time, all the time, you just got to follow God. Like I, I didn't think we was going to go, I didn't think we was going to go noonday because I had plans for you, honey. And the man always got to lead the woman and say, no, we're going to Bible study. <laughs> Why are you laughing about that? Like, Pastor, that's not how I went in my house. <laughs> total, the total opposite, all right? Okay, what a way to start your birthday. But we never know sometimes why God is saying, go to the store when you just broke groceries yesterday. And I guess I can pick up some, but I don't, I don't even know why I'm doing this. You'll get so used to flowing with God. Or you're, you're, you're here, whatever. Verse 10 is the why. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. Oh, my word. Fully doing what? Pleasing, pleasing him. Can God be any more pleased with you than he is right now? <clears throat> Did you hear my question? Why didn't you all answer? You answered? What was your answer? Can he be any more pleased with you than he is right now? And you said yes. Who else says yes? Lift your hand. You say yes. You say yes. He can be more pleased with you than he is right now? Okay. King David, you're not chiming in, sir. No, I'm not. No, <laughs> I thought you were answering the question. But then when you said, I'm not. It's, a, it's, it's almost like a trick question. Because what are you judging this all? Your current behavior or your rightful biblical state in Christ? See, a lot of you keep seeing yourselves based upon yourselves, and he sees you based upon Jesus. So can he be any more pleased with you that see and see that's where that's where that ooh when you get the and, and we have a nerve to talk about the world like the world is indecisive the world doesn't know like if little boys want to be little girls or little girls we don't even know our gender identities etc 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 we talk about those things but some believers don't know whether they're saint or sinner. And I think that's just 
as equally as tragic than a little boy not knowing that he's a little boy. Because if you don't know who you are and who you are, the devil, and I talked about this a little bit on Sunday, but I didn't get to Genesis chapter number three, and this thing was on from the very beginning. Did God say to the woman, men, you hear what I'm saying? Did God truly say that you couldn't eat? And she said, yeah, God told us we couldn't eat of it. But God told them not to touch it or eat it. Why are you looking at me like that? Which way did it go? Let's go there and look at it. Three, chapter number three. She said, God said, don't touch it. Or did he say that, Satan? What? We don't have to banter back and forth. Let's go there. He jumping on me, getting all hostile. I'm about to give his wife a seed back. I'm not reading your face. Let's read the scripture. Because one said, oh, God said, don't eat it. And she said, touch it, which may have deceived the matter even more because when she touched it, nothing happened. Okay, let's look at it. Let's go over there. Let's, let's go over there. Give me Genesis chapter number three real quick because I could be getting them swapped, but uh, one, of my, one of my leaders here, thank God for the correction, Okay, so the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden, right? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, as God says, you shall not eat it. Oh, she said, nor touch it, right? Lest you die. Well, did God tell Adam not to touch it? He just told him not to what? And then the serpent says to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Now get this, and you will be like God. She was already like God. I mean, how many times uh, is the devil tricking us or putting us in the trick bag to try to get us to think that we're, this is the New Testament right here. This is the Old Testament companion scripture of the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. We take on the very nature of God. That old nature is completely done away with. And you keep functioning out of two. Well, you know, that's my old nature. Keep it. You don't have an old nature anymore. You have a new nature. The new nature has replaced the old nature you may have old proclivities of the nature of the old, but the nature is gone. You can make some choices of the old nature, but the old nature is gone. You have the nature of God Almighty. You've been created in his likeness and in his image. I dare you to be bold enough and shout like, I'm like God. No, you can't be. You can't be like God and then question whether or not I'm saved or a sinner. Whether or not I'm going to heaven or hell. you just as confused as a little boy who doesn't know his sexual identity. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is not talking about me. He's talking about people on virtue or something. I know the people on virtue are going to say something. Donnie Mac, I'm like God. So now there's this confidence. But now, how am I like God? 
God is love. But I don't treat people like Jesus treats people. And by this love will all men know who you connected to. And if you based upon, if you base that upon your behavior, you'll never match up to be God until you want to change your behavior along with your belief. That's what your pastor is in the process of and been in this process for years. I'm telling you, I'm not like a whole lot of people. No, and I'm talking about specifically Christians. I'm distancing myself even from believers because believers have preferences that don't align with being filled with the knowledge of his will. Because y'all can have an encounter with people and be done with them. I don't see that in the scripture. You can forgive them, but you don't want to have anything else to do with them. Well, what if God just forgave you and didn't want to... <laughs> Y'all ain't talking back to me. Turn to your neighbor and say, cat got your tongue or what's the deal? I mean... <clears throat> Apostle knows, yeah, I know, I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Someone came to me in my office. We sat down and uh, brought to my attention that uh, a deacon at this uh, <clears throat> other church told him after he told him where he was attending. <clears throat> this particular person I gotta give me a new brand of cigarette. I said that years ago, and I ran into this woman. Don't let me forget about the deacon. The deacon. <clears throat> I ran into this woman in Faith Dome, and uh, she said, Oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. You have blessed my life so much. I said, well, praise the Lord. To God be the glory. That's always my response. <clears throat> she said, my mama used to love you. I said, used to? You know, I thought she passed away. Because I, I thought she was going to tell me, yes, yeah, she passed away. She said, yes, she used to, uh, but she doesn't, she doesn't uh, care for you as much as she did anymore. I said, uh, get your mama on the phone. She said, she right there. So I said, mama, <laughs> called over. I said, mama, I heard you used to love me. What happened? She said, baby, the minute I heard you smoke, <laughs> I stopped watching you then because I don't believe a man of God should smoke. And Dee been telling me, you better stop playing. You better tell them people you don't smoke. I said, Mama, I do not smoke, baby. She said, well, you sure convinced me that you did. <laughs> and then she said, you be coughing and carrying on. I, that's what I used to say all the time. I got to give me a different brand of cigarettes. I used to say it all the time on television. Until mom, and then I just brought it up right then, and I thought about mom. Okay, for those of you who don't know me, I don't smoke nor drink anything, and I'm not a cussing pastor. You understand what I'm saying? All right, uh, Deacon. So, 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 a guy who was, who's a partner now, when he was considering becoming a partner about five weeks ago, one of his friends, because he relocated to this area and he was looking for a ministry, one of his friends who lived here asked him had he found a church yet. And he said, yeah, man, I, I found me a, a good ministry. I'm really enjoying it. And the guy wanted to know who he said, uh, do you know Mike and Dee Dee Freeman? The guy said, oh, uh, look, you got to get out of there. 
you got to get out of there right now. A deacon at another church. And he called the name of the church, and I know the pastor personally. And the pastor had been talking about me mm, to the congregation. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm noticing? The church is cutting off body parts more than the world is. We're the only group of people that tear each other down and cut off. The Bible said, and I guess they've taken it literally, if your right foot offend me, cut it off. Because church people, who did I say? I didn't say believers will cut you off in a lickety split instead of coming and sitting with you. And I said, hey, uh, bruh, listen, maybe his pastor knows something that uh, he doesn't know and he's just warning his flock about me so that people will be aware of who they should stay away from. And I said, by virtue of him telling you that, he could be saving your life. He said, but I've been here long enough, and I know by the Spirit of God that I've joined the right place. I said, but you can't fault him for trying to look out for you based upon what he knows. I said, if there's still any confusion or impasses about it, my policy is invite him to come see me. Let's sit down and talk about it. I said, you go and tell him that I said, we will sit down and talk about it. He said, oh, no, he ain't going to do that. See, if anybody ever comes to you, first of all, stop defending me. I don't even defend me. Because God told me years ago that he would defend me and disarm my enemy. I think it conveys a major major conveyance of immaturity and insecurity when you go around commenting back to people on Instagram and Facebook. I'm going to tell them one thing. Matter of fact, some of you all should stay on Facebook until you get healed or grow up. Amen. What did I just say? Because some of y'all can't stand to see people talk about you. And you always got to be running behind somebody who says something about you. Man, I so rejoice. Sometimes I see that stuff and I say, well, praise God. The Bible says now, you better be concerned when everybody speak well of you. This is at least one person that keep me in the game. <laughs> because everybody doesn't speak well of me. So then... When someone says something about your man of God out there in the public, tell me, you don't know my bad. I'll tell you what, you say something about him again. I'm going to crack you down to the white meat. <laughs> no. Say, thank you for the information. But he's told us that if someone comes to us about something like you've come to me, warning me about him, he'll be more happy more than happy to sit down with the both of us because he loves us that much to clear it all up. No, no, we don't want to do that. No, it's all right. I was just trying to help you. You're not trying to help anybody when you don't want to take it to the next level as the scripture. Ooh, that's why I pray that you are filled with the knowledge of his will. So you don't have to go through those things in life, the very vicissitudes of life that are throwing a lot of good believers off. I don't have to run around defending me. I found the pastor. I got him on the phone. I said, Pastor, uh, it's a deacon in your ministry. Let's talk about it. Man, I went back and I apologized to everybody about what I said to you. Maybe he wasn't there that day. Pastors, 
talking about other pastors, putting each other down. How are you ever going to get ahead? You know what I discovered? People who are better off or have more than you don't talk about people who are less than them. Did you hear what I just said? I'm learning this art of communicating because a lot of times, and maybe the beautiful Miss Beatle can help me with this, a lot of times we talk too much and we don't pause. Like the Lord told me something to tell the singles. He says, stop trying to say I do to someone else when you haven't said I do to yourself. And then you pause guess what happens? They process that last statement. Or a move like this. You know, I'm still training and developing myself to communicate. And sometimes you talk too fast and you have to fill in some of your cadence with, you know, you know, I'm saying, okay, like, uh, you know, no, just pause. Say what you got to say and Honey, I really didn't like the way you said what you said to me the other day. Now she can hear you. Because you know it's always the woman. Pause. You don't receive that, Sister Betty? Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you, baby, with a name, name like Betty. You shouldn't receive it. Go back to Colossians. I got to wrap it up there. I thought I was going to get a little further, but this has been good to me. Say, I will not, I will not defend, me, defend me, not another day, not another day unless, unless the Spirit of God, Spirit of God gives, me gives me permission, permission. to speak because I'm filled with the knowledge of God's will. That you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him, being fruitful in what class? How many good works? And increasing in the what? Next verse. Woo, strengthen with all might. Oh, uh, look at somebody said, my pastor, pray this for me. My pastor, pray this for me. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and all long suffering with all joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you or us to be, ooh, Jesus, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Because he's delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son of love and in whom I dare somebody to shout. We have redemption through forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Jesus. Will you receive that? I decree as he is, B, so are you. Sister Mary, I decree, as he is, so are you. Yeah, are you hearing what I'm saying to you all? As he is, shout that, as Jesus is, right now, so am I, and my Father is absolutely, unequivocally, pleased with me right now. Hallelujah. Any questions before we depart? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Question to my right. Uh, 
<clears throat> you have not because you ask not. And if you want to go and you're serious about it and you need transportation, I'll get Pastor Tyler to make sure he gets you there. Okay? Pastor Tyler, right there with you. Pastor Tyler, even if we have to get a van to come up to pick up some who want to come, don't want to drive, don't want to spend their gas money, da 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 da, da I will accommodate them. Let's make sure we... We have that uh, straightened out. And since it's uh, a little ride um, on the way back, it's only about 60 minutes. I do it every, every week. Well, not every week. That's a lot. I do it every first Sunday. And, and, and so on the way back, because they should be coming back early, we want to stop at uh, Chick-fil-A or something and buy everybody something to eat. On the way back, on, on the ministry. You need at least 10 to 15 people before the we bus comes? Yeah, well, if you get 10, you're going to have a bus. Okay. Pastor Town said 15, and he's probably right about that, but I'll go for 10 because cause I'm, the, I'm the head. The movie night, the other movie <clears throat> that I wanted to see, we'll just schedule it for Baltimore. I, I, think, I think that is it. Yeah, it's called Unfaithful Love. Uh, but, and we were supposed to see that this Friday, but the producer somehow had a problem with... Uh, some issue with the money. And I'm like, you talking to the wrong one. You talking to the wrong one. What? If, if we want to see it, we want to see it. What, what, you, what you making money an issue for? Y'all stop making money an issue. God just told you to believe for it. He never told you to pay for anything. He said believe for it. That's the kind of pastor you have. Amen. I believe for what I want. Oh, wait till I tell you. No, no, y'all don't even know. OMG, like I have never in my entire ministry been propositioned like I am now. Is there a timetable you're working on? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it ASAP, sir. I can at least tell you. Ooh, but when I tell you. But you're going to be praying, right? Yeah, always. Okay, any other question? Okay. Uh, can you pick me up from Rockville? Why don't you just get in an Uber? We pay for Ubers. Get in an Uber and come. But we don't want everybody here in Baltimore paying for an Uber where we can pay and we can provide, you know what I mean? All right. And it may be another partner in Rockville. Okay, so anybody in Rockville, you call, how about Charlotte? No, <laughs> can you see Charlotte? No, we're not getting rides from Charlotte. Uh, and I'm sure they're not asking from, for a ride from Charlotte. Um, but whoever lives in Rockville, uh, somebody said, get on the bus. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Susan, you were in the spirit earlier. <laughs> now she's telling people, get on the bus. Oh, get on what bus? The, 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 how about New Jersey? <laughs> okay, so y'all, uh, will it be streamed for eCampus? Okay, we'll get a code for eCampus. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. I'm talking on the turn. The church only pays up to $55. Well, I mean, $55, where you coming from? 
Is that a good uh, a distance for Uber fifty five dollars? I've gotten I've gotten an Uber from Dallas Airport, and it it was like one ten. So you coming from Rockville? That's less than half of that distance. I don't know. I'm not gonna get into that with y'all. I meant the base. I meant that base on the movie. Get on the bus. Okay. Well. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Depending on the time. Okay. Anybody got any questions concerning the lesson? <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, you want to sow? We 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 sow noonday. We sow seven as well. Uh, what's 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 present? What what is like right before us is the scholarship deal. Amen. We always want to give at least how much, Doc? A hundred thousand dollars. We will always want to sow one hundred thousand dollars to our continuing students uh, every single year. Uh, we've been doing it for ooh, we're, we've surpassed the two million dollar mark in giving scholarships. So you're doing yeah, that's a big deal. Okay, uh, 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 so we've we're committed to that. Uh, so we're like halfway there. So if you will begin to sow, I don't think Dr. Dita and I have sown into that yet. We typically sow 1500, 15 to 1800 every scholarship offering time. I'm telling you, and we did that even when our children were disqualified because they were our children. I didn't even like the appearance of that. I didn't think it would be you know, it would look good that my children could win a scholarship here in the ministry. It's just, you know, you can question some things about that. Like Dr. Price, I've set rules for myself. And I've never, I've never been a part of counting the money. I've never been a part of knowing who gives what and that kind of thing. I was, I was kind of, I was kind of thrown that he did it at one time. And a lot of pastors do it. I just, I wanted to always separate myself from money and ministry, you know, because I don't know who gives what, because no one is going to be able to hold me captive by what they give or what they don't give. And if I have to say something to you and you give a million dollars a year, I'll, I'll be free to say it to you and, and, and not have you, you know, replying to you. You must don't know how much money I give to this ministry. No, I don't. Thank God you do. But if your money goes away because I'm loving you in this correction, then I've trust God all this time. Oh, man, a whole lot of other money has walked out because they've gotten upset with me, but we've never functioned in the red for over 30 years. So yeah, we give all glory to God. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all trust so much in yourselves and others. You got to begin to trust God. Trust God. Even talking back to people or clapping back or responding to their negativity, it's a sign that you don't trust God. Okay? And, and you got you to start trusting God. I trust God for my entire life. I would share that testimony with you. Let me do it briefly. Someone took something from my bedroom. One of the almond bears. I had money on my, how many of y'all know this story? Yeah, I had money on my mantle, my fireplace mantle. And an armor bear went in my bedroom, took the money. And I didn't know how much I had. I don't know how much they took. I just walked by the money and the Holy Spirit said, they took your money. I said, really? And so I went to him, I said, Hey, give me my money. Why do you take my money? He said, I didn't take your money. And I said, listen to me, man. Just give me my money so we can move on. There won't be any consequences as it relates to not allowing you to be here, that kind of thing. He said, they asked me, how much did you have? I said, I don't know. They said, well, how much are you accusing me of taking? 
I said, I don't know. Well, how are you going to say I took your money? You don't even know what you had. And they probably would have known I didn't know what I had, so they helped themselves, and I didn't know. I said, well, listen, obviously, you need a pastor that you can honor. So, you know, until you're willing to tell me the truth, then uh, let's just, just cut off this uh, exchange, my being your pastor. Go, go find your pastor, and I'm, I'm escorting him to the front door of my house. I'm loving him. And in the interim, his wife comes up and says, well, what's going on? He, he looked at her and said, Pastor said, I, I, took, I took his money. And she said, how much did he take? I said, I don't know. Uh, how much did you have? I don't know. Well, how are you going to accuse? And I'm thinking it's a modern day Ananias and Sapphira thing that's going ready for. So I'm trying to get him, to, man, just really, you know, the minute you tell me the truth, it's over. So I opened the door and I went to hug him and she, she kind of just reluctantly wanted to hug me. She said, because pastor, you told us to stick by our husbands and I believe my man of God. I said, fine, yeah, you're doing the right thing. But I'm telling you in this case, he stole my money. And so I hugged him, he was on his way out the door. She stopped midway at that threshold and looked back at him and said, did you take pastor's money? And he dropped his head. And I said, come on back in, y'all. Shut the door. Come on, let's go in and get something to eat. Oh, give me my money first. <laughs> we got the money. It was $600. And uh, guess where he was the very next day? In my house serving. How you, you, you let him back in the house? Where, where do you think Jesus is going to get, have you to start? See, the reason why you don't let people restart because you don't trust them. God never commanded me to trust you. He told me to love you. So I loved up on him. I was able to measure the thing by the spirit of the thing. And God said he was just in the jam. And you put him in that situation. I did, oh Lord, I just did it on a couple of Four, three, three or four weeks ago, I put a dollar on my desk because people coming through my office sometimes clean. I put a dollar on my desk and it stayed there. I said, oh, that wasn't enough. So I put $20 with the $1 on my desk and it stayed there for another week. I said, God, that wasn't enough. So then I put 100 on top of the 20 and the one and put it there. Came back something out and that was gone. Then people look at me like, why you set them up to fail? How they set them up to fail? If you're not a thief. <laughs> Lo and behold, this person come to me weeping like, you just don't know how I just saw it. And I, yeah. Man, I tell you, this, this, things are just so bad for me right now. And something happened, and I, I didn't have the, and I had to go see a relative, and they was uh, put my arm around them. I said, "We'll talk about this later." You still need to go see your relative. Yes, sir. I said, "Here, take take the money back. Go see your relative." We'll talk about the rest later. If we're ever, if we ever just pause for a moment and think about maybe what would Jesus do? How would he handle this instead of just be quick? I don't want you around me. You can come into my house and take your money from me. Da, 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 da. You, you, sometimes you got to put yourself in other people's situation. Even when the scripture says, he that stole, let him steal no more. He told them not to commit adultery, and then they throw the girl out there in front of Jesus. Jesus took a moment. He paused. He went down and rode in the sand a little bit. The law says, stoner, what you writing in the sand for? See, the, 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 the proclivity, the propensity in man is to do away with him. I tell you what, you stole from me. I ain't no, 
You will never do it again. No, 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 no. I don't know. I'm led by God. That's why you can't ever say what you're not going to do. But I'm the fool, but God keep increasing me. Wait till you hear. Oh, oh, no, y'all going, you will know when you hear, you're going to say, oh, my God, that's crazy. I thought owning three car dealerships was crazy. This doesn't even scratch the surface to that. The favor of God. It's on as agape and honor. But keep doing it your way. Keep making foregone conclusions about how you're going to do life without acknowledging God in all your ways. You'll never make him Lord because you already know what you're going to do. And until you pause and say, let me, let, me, let me inquire within. Let me find out what God want me to do in this situation. Yeah, they slapped me. Yeah, I know they talked about me. But maybe God want me to take them to lunch. What's ailing them? What's hurting them so bad that they would treat me this way? And I've never done anything to them wrong. See, that's a whole nother level in walking with Jesus. Because <clears throat> they spit on him. What did he do? You know, Father, forgive them. For they don't even know what they do. Y'all, they know exactly what they're doing. And I'm going to teach them a lesson myself. When the scripture says vengeance is his. But I thank God you're filled with the knowledge of his will all the days of your life and you're led by a spirit and has spiritual understanding increasing in everything you do say, touch, and are a part of. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord mm, make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you his peace. And don't you dare ever forget these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 7. For we not by sight. No doubt about it. That's what my daddy said. We'll see you. Hey fam, I'm Sanaya, and I want to personally thank you for tuning in to today's service. I know you had an amazing encounter with God, but guess what? It does not have to stop there. If you want to receive salvation, find a church home, or even receive Apostle Mike and Dr. Dee Dee Freeman as your pastors, feel free to scan the QR code on the screen. We would love to have you join us for one of our services in person so you can join us at 8 a.m. at our Temple Hills location or 10 a.m. at our Brandywine in Baltimore location. And lastly, don't forget to share your takeaways because as our apostle always says, we're teaching you so that you can teach someone else. We can't wait to see you soon and I pray that you have an amazing day.